Um, yesterday we talked about the microbiological test that we covered in the manual and today we are going to speak about the chemical tests in fish and fishery products um, that we have covered in the manual and what we have covered relates to the major chemical hazards uh, we, with the concern of public health that must be controlled and tested chemically. And um, this includes heavy metals that might be man-made or environmental accumulated in fish and fishery products, then histamine, very important test. Um, histamine is found only in certain fish species. Um, then the manual also covers, covers marine toxins because this is a risk for, uh, for the fish from this region. And um, the man manual also covers sulfides. Um, what we don't cover is more or less pesticides and um, veterinarian drugs. And there, as I told you in the, in the first day yesterday, there's a special document that we might put on, on, on the web page of Mega Pesca so that you can refer to this. It relates mainly also to setting up monitoring plans. And <coughs> now we are going to hear about histamines, determination of histamines in fish and fishery products, and we will go through the sampling and analysis of um, the EU requirements, which is the official control test method. As you heard, I don't know if we heard before that um, histamines result from the decarboxylation of histidine by the microbial enzymes. So if you don't keep the cooling chain, also you have high risk to have uh, histamines in fish. They are more spe specifically produced in the muscles of the fish, which contain high levels of histidine. So there's the source, more or less. Um, tuna is most often implicated in histamine poisoning, followed by, uh, to a lesser degree by herring, sardine, or mackerel. And food histamine poisoning is not to be underestimated. It has a form of allergy type reaction. This is why it's also covered by the regulation because it's a health concern. And you have, could have um, disorders like headache, vomiting, diarrhea. And the symptoms occur immediately or, or after some hours of eating the fish. Now, this we heard already yesterday. <coughs> Histamine is regulated in the uh, regulation for the microbiological criteria of foodstuff, which is the 27.3 from 2005. And there you have the sampling plan, the reference to the EU test method, and um, also the interpretation of the test results. It's all written down in the 27.3, and it states also that histamine must be tested in fish and fishery products, where it's mainly the risk, um, by HPLC method for the quantitative de determination. So it cannot be qualitatively. We have to quantify histamine. Um, applied is a three-class sampling plan. We will see this um, a consign next slide, a consignment comprising a fish species that is suspected to produce histamine should not be placed on the market at all. So we have to test um, before and is tested in nine samples and none of the nine sa samples should exceed the level, the maximum level we will see, which is 200 milligram per kilogram. It applies only to certain families of fish. You also find this in the regulation. So I have listed him, the fishes, the fish there, it's tuna, mackerel, bonito. Um, especially the families are listed by the regulation. So 
So if you take nine samples for testing of histamine, the average content should be 100 milligram per kilogram or less. And no more than two samples uh, could have levels between 100 and 200 milligram per kilogram. And no sample is allowed to exceed the maximum level of 200 milligram per kilogram. Then we have another limit for fish that went um, undergone an enzyme ripening treatment in brine. Higher levels are permitted, but not more than twice above the level, which is 400 milligram per kilogram. Recently, um, the sampling plan for fish sauce has been changed. Maximum level for fish sauce is 400 milligram per kilogram. And we have a new single sampling plan. So if in one single sample you found more than, find more than 400 milligram per kilogram, then a whole batch is deemed unsafe and cannot be placed on the market. This is why the test is quite relevant, also trade related. OK, here we have everything. This is now um, the, the, the ones with the higher level I put here. And um, the reference um, method is HPLC. And if you go down to the foot mark, you will see it's th this two AOC publications are referenced as the original EU reference methods. And they are no real st standards. It's a publication. Also, they are not trialed, so you don't have uh, validation data there. Some, which is, we will see, kind of disadvantage that EU has just found out. OK, these are two publications that are now the EU reference methods, and they mainly deal with sample preparation. But it's, um, and, uh, the tests are done by HPLC. We put not everything in the manual because basically what you need to do or need to have the two original publications. I have one here. And then from there you have to sort out your equipment needs, the reagent needs, and um, all the instructions and procedures um, how to conduct the test. What you need is a high-speed blender balances, cent centrifuge, pipettes, again, and then vortex mixer, water bars, laboratory freezer. We, actually, what the um, publication says, we have to work at very low temperatures to get the whole protein extracted. And ideally, also, the injection into the HPLC system should be at minus 20 degrees, which we don't know how this works. Only if you have a certain equipment, then you might be able to do this. You need HPL system with a UV detector and a C18 um, column, which the, the specification is given there and also by the publication. For the reagents, um, you need <coughs> good water quality, and different kind of acids, um, perchloric acid, acetone, okay, acetonitrile, and denzyl chloride is um, you need for extraction, then proline, toluene, and some um, standard for doing the calibration curve, some standard material. The principle is histamine is extracted from uh, fish tissue after acid precipitation of the insoluble protein. And that's the difference, you know, we really have to get all the protein out of the fish extract. And then derivatization with denzel chloride and then we will have a run with the HPLC and UV detection. Important is also that you have um, you fully homogenize the material with this high-speed blender. 
So sample preparation, I put it in the manual. You can follow from there. Um, you weigh five gram of the test material in its centrifuge tube. You cool it in crushed ice. Then you add um, 10 ml of perchloric acid, then 100 microliter of this diaminopropane solution and blend it for one minute. Then you centrifuge um, high speed at four degrees for five minutes, four degrees cold. Then pipette um, 100 microliter of the supernatant into a glass vial. Then you add sodium carbonate solution and then this stencil chloride solution and close tile, swirl and incubate in the dark. Cool to room temperature, then you add proline solution, swirl, swirl keep the tube dark uh, for 15 minutes. Then you add toluene and do the same but um, keep at minus 18 degrees for at least 30 minutes. I also checked the procedure from the French reference laboratory. They have the procedure online. And you can also see the procedure uh, if you go to, to the commission's website. You will see later on um, one publication I found because it's all translated from here, from these research papers. And um, I think that the different laboratories apply it a bit differently um, in terms of temperature, this procedure. And then you collect all the non-frozen organic substance in a new tube and evaporate the solvent under nitrogen flow at a room temperature. We dissolve in acetonitrile and swirl well. Then you filter, filter it and inject 10 microliter in the HPLC. So you need to have all these um, solutions, acids, in place. You prepare also your stock solutions for the calibration working solutions and the calibration standard solutions. With as usual, and then you separate um, with the HPLC and detection system is UV, with the re reverse phase C atom column using a water acetonitrile gradient, which the data are given also in, in the booklet in case you will follow up. You use the C atom column and identify by retention time as baseline resolved peak and quantification is by UV absorption at 254 nanometer against internal standard. I mean, all, all was what's happening with the instruments, you, you need to implement in your laboratory. You know how this works. You need to know how to do the gradient, um, the pH sensitivity. This is not given in, in, in this, um, how to say, uh, instructions. For calibration curve, best you do five point calibration curve, plotting histamine against the response then you c compare retention times of the standard solution and you calculate the histamine from the cal uh, calibration curve and you express it in, in microgram per kilogram. This is um, what we had also in the microbiological um, regulation. The values always follow. We had the limit is 100 to 200 milligram per kilogram. So since um, <coughs> you are an official controls laboratory, you should validate the method. So there is no data given by the publications. 
but EU gives some requirements in the 882 for official controls, laboratories and what kind of um, performance criteria you could use for validation. Um, best would be if you use certified <coughs> reference material and participate in a PT. As mentioned before, if you have a finding now in three of the samples above 200 milligram per kilogram, you cannot put the consignment on the market for human consumption. And um, yeah, there is a comparison. Done. Uh, first of all, as you have seen, there are a lot of different kind of ways to measure histamine. And there's uh, a lot of different uh, systems are on the market, test kits, ELISA, chemical fluorescence procedures, H HPLC. And you have various test kits because it's a relevant test. If you use the <coughs> kit for whatever reason, it should be validated. So now, um, when I check the news regarding uh, the test methods, um, there I found that there is also AOSC test method that you might use, be able to use in trade, which is easier for the detection of histamine. And Codex gives reference to this AOSC test method. So there could be arguments or discussions that you could use this kind of test method for trade. And um, they are different, these two methods. The EU mandated method is based, as you have seen, on HPLC separation by UV detection. And it, it's not trial, so it, it's kind of a research um, project, I would say. And the codex method is based um, on the formation of fluorescence derivatives of histamines and measurement then in a fluorimeter. But this um, method is validated. So you have validation data. It's specific to histamines, but it, it cannot cover other biogenic amines. The trend goes more to measure more than histamine. So our official controls laboratory, especially for fish and heavy metals and histamines, they have a multi-method developed ba based on HPLC and they can um, detect various biogenic amines. We put also people uh, to, for training there and they are, this method is used widely. So with, uh, with this method, you can only, the AOC only um, test histamines and um, uh, the HPLC method also has more and more um, advantages as well, lower detection limits. So now, since EU knows that or had a lot of discussion on this, they gave the Joint Research Institute a kind of contract to check the two methods. Um, this uh, joint research center is the reference laboratory, EU reference laboratory for histamines. And um, they checked the two methods, if they were comparable, using certain kind of fish, canned and fresh, fresh fish, fish, sorry, from the, the market in Brussels, because they are located in Brussels. And they checked repeatability, precision, and recovery, and found out that both of the methods conform to the specifications, to their instructions, but they were not fully equivalent. So what they also found out that the EU mandated method has a tendency to overestimate and the codex is underestimating the histamine content. Yeah, I guess. So here we are. <laughs> we want to really measure very specifically and quantify histamine. And we obviously have not yet 
maybe the correct method. And I guess it has also a lot to do with the sample preparation. So what they found is that the EU method, EU method was very accurate for fresh tuna. So very good for fresh tuna. For the other fish, it was, there was a matrix effect. And the matrix effect was not handled, is not handled or dealt with in, in, in the original publication. So, what they recommend now to EU, so this is in discussion, this is how it works also with our risk assessment. Now, since um, EU launched this study, they gave recommendation to the EU that they need to optimize the test method and to el eliminate the matrix effect or take it into account. And what they also said, it needs a trial, this test method. So we need interlaboratory comparison to establish some concrete re uh, data for this method. And it also might need a correction on the recovery because this, most of our trade related method uh, need to correct around recovery. And this was in 2013, and since now I haven't heard anything. We have no changes, and uh, what I know is it's not, uh, it's kind of costly also uh, to organize in the laboratory comparisons.